If you watch the nightly news, you'd think that the entire state of California is on fire. If you watch the local news and read the local editorials in the paper, you think the entire reason for the forest fires that are happening in California this year, 2018, is completely up to global warming. Both are a complete oversimplification of the facts of the forest fires that are going on in California this year and for all years leading up to this year. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I'm a lifelong California resident. I live right here in Nevada City, California at the 3,200 foot elevation right in the middle of wildfire country. I grew up in the air tanker industry and even spent a year flying for the U.S. Forest Service training up to be a lead plane pilot. And today I want to discuss some of the fundamental issues that are impacting California wildfires and the fight to fight these forest fires in California this year and all years previous. Wednesday the 8th of August, fairly early still in our California fire season and already this year over 712,000 acres of California have been burned. 12 fatalities this year, 8 civilian, 4 firefighters, so far at a cost of over 500 million dollars and counting. There's over 17 wildfires in California going on right now but there's three major wildfires that have been hitting the news. The car fire in Redding surrounded Whiskey Town Lake was started by a trailer they'd got a flat tire and sparks shot off into the brush and got that fire started 173,000 acres 47 percent contained as of today 1500 structures lost and several fatalities the ferguson fire is now a u.s forest service operation that's outside of yosemite to the west side of yosemite 95,000 acres 43 percent contained the Mendocino Complex, that's two separate fires just to the west side of Clear Lake, the north and the south and the west side of Clear Lake. The ranch fire to the north and west of Clear Lake is 251,000 acres, 46% contained, and the river fire just to the south of the ranch fire is about 50,000 acres and 81% contained. Those two fires have not come together. But the Mendocino complex as a whole, if you take the acreage of the ranch fire and the river fire, add them up, that surpasses the acreage of California's largest wildfire, which was last year's Thompson fire. Correction, that's last year's Thomas fire in Southern California. That fire was about 280,000 acres. The narratives that you're hearing in the media today are a gross oversimplification to meet a narrow political agenda of all the issues that are affecting the wildfires in California and the West in general. One of the first things to understand about California is its geography, particularly here in the North State. In the North State you have the Central Valley surrounded by the Coast Range to the West and the Sierra Nevada Mountains to the East. And when a high pressure weather system moves over the state of California, that Central Valley simply cooks, gets blazing hot, especially the farther North you go up towards Redding. The Central Valley located near sea level at about 100 feet from that elevation up to about 2,000 feet and the foothills surrounding that valley is primarily chaparral type country. Chaparral type country that requires in to some degree a, a certain amount of wildfire to, to, to grow. So that chaparral is designed to burn. It burns every year. It needs to burn. It's part of California's natural landscape to burn that chaparral. Above about 1,500, 2,000 feet, you start to get into California's timber country. And like you see right here at the 3,200 feet elevation, the timber starts getting pretty tall, pretty fast. Now a quick overhaul, <laughs> overhaul. Now a quick overview of California history. Before 1849 or 1848, when gold was discovered, California was, to the, for the most part, largely unpopulated. 
except for the Native Americans and a few uh, California ranchos, giant cattle ranches here in California. It's widely believed, and we don't know to how much extent, that the Native Americans did tend to manage the forests here in Northern California as uh, in the summertime they would migrate up into the high country, and then as they left the high country in the fall would set small fires to control the brush as they departed the high country and head down to lower, more hospitable elevations in the wintertime, helping to thin the forest. In 1849, the gold rush happened here in Northern California and the entire world rushed in. This place was just absolutely overrun with folks. And of course, that industry is a uh, steam powered industry. So immediately the forests here in Northern California were virtually denuded of all of its timber in order to feed the gold rush. Timber was needed for buildings, mines, structures, trestles, and railroads. By the time the Transcontinental Railroad got in here, a steam-powered locomotive on the Transcontinental Railroad would take over 25 cords of wood just to move maybe 50 or 60 miles up the Sierra Nevada mountains. So wood was desperately needed and taken from all the forests to feed the gold rush. As a result, there's only very few portions of old growth timber in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Since the gold rush, the timber in, here in California has been a, a renewable resource continuously being harvested until recently. When the Transcontinental Railroad Agreement was made to come through California, the big part of that agreement was every other section of land was to be given to the railroad companies in exchange for developing and building the Transcontinental Railroad. That's why you look at a Tahoe National Forest map or any national forest map up here in Northern California, you see a checkerboard pattern of green and white lands, forest service and private lands going moving through the forest. Over the years, as the railroads divested their interests outside of railroading, including these lands, those lands became available to uh, timber harvesters and became private timber lands. Over the years, these timber harvesters operated successfully here in California until excessive environmental regulations, of starting with the giant spotted owl controversy back in the 80s, I, as I recall, began to put the crimp on logging in California. Northern California used to be covered with lumber mills and had a burgeoning lumber timber industry. Today, that's virtually non-existent. While the timber industry was burgeoning here in Northern California, the U.S. Forest Service adopted a, a, a policy of fire suppression at all costs to protect these valuable forest lands. And the most popular advertising campaign in advertising history was developed by the U.S. Forest Service featuring Smokey the Bear saying only you can prevent forest fires. After over 50 years of very successful fire suppression, we finally realized that maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe we do need to reintroduce fire into the natural landscape. Well, now you've got 50 years of fuel buildup in these forests. You've got a timber industry that's been knocked down to its knees. And so now you have the perfect storm for huge fires in Northern California. Let's go for a short ride and I'll show you what we're talking about here in the Tahoe National Forest. See that cloud of dust? That ain't a dirt biker. That's a big bear, probably a brown bear. I'll let him get ahead and leave him alone. Here's a good example of the forest here in the Tahoe National Forest. I'm on, on one of the OHV approved trails here in the TNF in the taller timber. And even though you can see it's fairly well spread apart and the brush here is actually fairly well under control, that's just bracken fern. <clears throat> The trees are still much too close together, resulting in a lot of, a lot of dead trees, a lot of dead wood. These forests need to be thinned out and properly managed. We need to get the red tape out of the way so that the folks that are in charge of these forests, they know what to do. We need to let them have the legal means to do it. And of course, the money. There's the other thing. It's always about the money. We never, we always find the money to fight the fires through the emergency funding, but we never seem to find the money to prevent the fires 
through proper management of your forest infrastructure. Now, less than a quarter mile away from that tall timber, here's a section of forest that has been replanted, I would guess, I don't know, maybe 30 years ago or so. Uh, I don't know if it was logged or if it was a fire. And there's a nice mixture of species in here. I see ponderosa, cedar, dug fir, even redwood and sugar pine. But at nearly six feet tall is this huge layer of thick brush up in here that needs to be cleaned out. Now, I'm not sure if this is a Forest Service plantation or a private timber operation, but this brush is a problem. And I'm afraid that the environmentalists and lawmakers that make the red tape and the rules that hamper the proper management of these forests live and come from the big city and spend little or no time out here in the forest with any actual hands-on experience to witness the effects of their work. Because as I think you can see here, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And if warming temperatures and catastrophic fires are the new normal out west here, we can redesign our forests to meet those demands. There's nothing old growth or completely natural about the forests here in, in the Sierra Nevada. For the most part, they have been a renewed resource ever since the gold rush. Another unsustainable feature here in California is its real estate, what firefighters call the wildland urban interface. In the large metropolitan areas of California, developers have been prevented from from developing vertically the needed real estate needed to accommodate a burgeoning population in the metropolitan areas. As a result, real estate prices have simply spiraled out of control, forcing many middle-class folks away from the major metropolitan areas in, in California and forces them dispersed throughout the state. Many of this population are retired folks as well, and they're looking to get out of the city and move to the country. So where do they move to? Where is, where is it affordable? It's mostly affordable in the wild urban interface, in that land area just outside of some of the smaller cities throughout Northern California that place them smack dab right in the middle of the 1,500 foot elevation where wildfire is so prevalent. So, for example, in the car fire, you get a trailer that gets a flat tire, Sparks hit the side of the road and set off the chaparral that's designed to burn every few years or so, catches that on fire, quickly grows up out of the canyon into the timber country above that that's not been logged or harvested or maintained or managed or thinned properly. That creates a head of fire so strong that it just barrels right through that timber country and the chaparral country and bumps into the the urban wildland interface, the homes located on the edge of the town of Redding, burning them to the ground. The forests in California are an infrastructure that need to be maintained, just as the spillway was at Oroville. And at some point it becomes unfair to the rest of the nation that the rest of the nation continue to bail out California with emergency funding for a lack of maintenance of its fundamental infrastructure. True warming temperatures exacerbate these conditions here in California, but fundamentally, political divisions in California prevent both sides from coming together and looking at both sides of this equation and coming up with a reasonable solution resulting in California's ultimate unsustainability in the future. So if preventative maintenance of our forest infrastructure here in California is to be part of the solution to preventing these giant wildfires, California politicians and environmental groups are going to have to review their policies and procedures of the past and engage some of the very groups that they helped destroy in the first place, for example the timber industry, to find a logical solution to California's wildfires. See you here.